that setting up and pouring out, you know, and I appreciate the cup bearers that we have in this church. God bless you. God bless you. We want to just continue to worship. But before we do, would you just take your neighbor's hand? I know that uh, we're a little skinny today, but that's okay. Let's just pray together that God would have his way in us that are here, that God would do something mighty in us this morning. Can we do that? Let's pray together. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are our king. And God, we are honored to serve you in such capacity. And Lord, I just pray right now that everything we do today, everything we sing, everything that we say, everything we do, Lord, would be pleasing to you, God. We want to serve you with all of our being this morning. We want your spirit to come in and take over, God. Control us this morning, God. Have your way with us this morning. Lord, it is not about a man's agenda, but God, it's about your agenda. We want what you want this morning, so have your way in us today. Lord, as we worship, I pray that your healing power would come down. Lord, as we give you praise, God, I pray that a peace would come that passeth all understanding. Lord, I pray that you would touch your people once again in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen, amen. God bless you. There's going to be more coming in, I'm sure, but would you just turn around and shake someone's hand, go find someone to greet that you haven't greeted yet this morning, and let's worship together.
we love you this morning, God. We run to you right now, Jesus. Father, we give you all of our worship and all of our praise. Father, there's none like you. We thank you for who you are. Jesus, you are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. We love you this morning. We worship you. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
that lifted their hands. God, that you would give them that peace, Lord. That confidence knowing that you're that, you're all the Father, you are provider. God, touch them right now where they are. And Lord, for those that perhaps maybe they're not able to be here this morning for whatever reason, God, we lift them up right where they are. Lord, touch them, Jesus. Touch them right where they are. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor because you're worthy of it all. We bless you. Afghanistan, 
Uh, we were able, me and Michelle watched the video uh, of their Thanksgiving meal, and it was, it was, it was awesome to see them out on the front lines defending us. It was awesome. So if you have anything, don't forget to uh, um, put it in the, the, there's a gray bucket over there, a tub, go ahead and put it in there, and we'll get it tomorrow shipped off, okay? And uh, also, uh, next Sunday, following the service, we're gonna be, we're gonna be going out. On the 18th, we're gonna have our open house and our, our, our dessert dinner, or dessert social thing, <laughs> not dessert dinner, because that would be contradicting. But uh, uh, we're gonna go out after service tomorrow with our touch cards, and we're gonna just blanket this whole area. We want to reach as many people in this area as we can. So next Sunday, right after service, we're gonna do that. And uh, um, I already mentioned the open house. Next, on the 18th, we're gonna have our open house, and we're gonna have the dessert. And then uh, um, don't forget also that Christmas Day, the 25th of, of December, we're not going to have a normal service. We're going to have a service the 24th that night, uh, I think from 7 to 8. But then on Sunday on the Sunday morning, we're going to be going out to breakfast, as, as, you know, as a church. And I've never done it yet. I, Kevin's been hyping it up to me. I don't know what it, I don't know what to think about it other than it's, they get blessed at IHOP. So we're going to go out and do that. Also, as I have some time, um, you're going to see your kids with these little books. And these are awesome little books. They're coupon books for Burger King. And this is an awesome fundraiser for your kids. If you want to see your kids go to, to youth camps, to go be able to go skiing, to be able to go do the things that they, that they want to do, to be able to actually go out and do the outreaches that we want to do, to this community, we need finances. And so these coupon books, they're $5, and out of the $5, $4 of it goes directly to the youth ministry. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be handing them out, or not handing them, but selling them after church. We'll also be giving them to the youth to go to their schools, to go to their friends and family. Also, it's, it's on the internet too. We have it right there where you can go and click, and if you have a cousin that lives in Nevada that you want them to buy it, this is good. All country, in the whole United States, there's no limitation. They have expiration dates on them, but Burger King accepts old coupons, so they don't, they don't care. So find a youth and contribute to this, this ministry. So anyways. All right, let's give up a, a round of applause for our worship team. They do an awesome job this morning. And I know it sounds like I'm wanting applause for myself because I'm up there too, and I don't, but I just love the team. The team is awesome to see teenagers helping out, you know, and, and on the drums and Sheree on the bass. I just get blessed, and I don't say it enough, so I appreciate them and, and what they do. So thank you, worship team. This morning we're going to continue our, our series on the perfect gift. And before I go into that, let me just share with you real quick um, – that there is has been an update to our website so if you haven't seen it lately you're going to want to go to our website it's completely revamped a little bit user friendly a little bit easier uh there was about a uh 12 hour span where it was just kind of in beta mode where only certain people got to see it or at least only people certain people saw it and uh from what all the feedback i got uh it's a lot easier to use it's a lot more functional and so if you need anything, prayer requests, if you have, if you need to leave a comment, if you need maybe you have a testimony or you need to see what's going on in the church, it's a lot easier to use. So uh, make sure you use our website uh, because it's there for you to keep in touch with what's going on. Uh, a lot of people ask me every single week, hey, Pastor, when's this going on? Well, you know, they're online. I see them online all the time, but yet they don't check the website. And that's what it's there for. It's an information center for you to know what's going on at the church, okay? So I just want to throw that plug in there as well. And uh, as Randy said, those Burger King books are available on our website. You can purchase them right there, and I think it's fantastic. So I'm going to buy a few, you know. Uh, you know, I don't like everything about Burger King, but every once in a while I'll have a Whopper value meal, and that book itself is only $5, and the Whopper value meal is over $5. So you're already... Uh, if it, you know in the positive if you pick one up and you're sending kids to camp and that's the most important thing is that we bless our kids so also right after service we need to uh, tear down 
at 11.30 when we close down this service, there's going to be another group coming in as we're tearing down, they're going to be setting up. This is the one, I mean, it was just a, an oversight on the school's part, and they double booked the building. They were supposed to be here at 11, and I said, well, that ain't happening. So, so they're going to come in right as we finish, and they're going to be setting stuff up for a Christmas uh, event that they're, they're holding. Um, so if you see people that you don't know coming in, that's why. Uh, in fact, I see some people rolling up already, and they're just going to have to wait. Or just come in and, and get blessed with the, with the message. That's fine, too. So uh, if you see strangers, that's why. So we're going to be tearing down, and anyone that can stick around and help would be uh, most appreciated. Okay? So last week we talked about the perfect gift, uh, our first, uh, seri- first session on our series, The Perfect Gift. We talked about what kind of perfect, what makes the perfect gift. I told you about my perfect gift would be a Bentley. That Bentley costs about $224,000, so I don't think I'm getting it anytime soon. But if you really wanted to know what, what I would like for Christmas, a Bentley would be okay. You know, I'm, I'm into nice cars, and that's just kind of my thing. It's not because I, I think I'm materialistic or, you know, I don't wear big diamond earrings in my ear or nothing like that. I just like cars. I like nice cars, and I like luxurious cars. Oh, there it is. He's got it up there again. So that's my, uh, if you all want to chip in for pastors, uh, I'll even make it passion appreciation. Birthday, Christmas, everything combined together, that would be the perfect gift, right? My wife's uh, ultimate gift was the Maserati. She's into cars, too. We kind of we kind of uh, hooked up that way, and she's into cars, too. That's her perfect gift. It's the Maserati Quattroport. And, you know, after we after we preached this message, and that's only about $135,000, that's all. Um, and after we preached this message last Sunday, uh, we're dropping Kennedy off at school, and one of the parents at her school drove right in front of us with a brand new 2012 Maserati uh, Gran Turismo. It's that car, but two-door. And uh, I mean, right in front of us, and my wife's like, Take a picture, take a picture. I'm taking a picture, you know. And, uh, he parked right in front of us. His kid's getting out. Our kid's getting out of our Buick. Hey, no offense to Buick owners. We love our Buick. You know what I'm saying? But they opened the door and looked a little bit different inside than our car. You know what I'm saying? But that would be her perfect gift. And, you know, we talk about what makes the perfect gift. Is it, is it, is it because of how much it's worth? Or is it because it's something you've wanted all your life? Or sometimes it's just because it came from somebody special. It came from mom, or it came from dad, or for me, it came from my five-year-old daughter, you know? Uh, It's a special gift. Now, I can't tell you, I'd be lying if I told you that every special gift that my daughter gives me goes in a little box and I save it forever because it's that perfect gift. No, 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 no. It goes on my desk for about two days, and then it goes into a round box. And that round box has a little liner in it, you know? That's where her... (laughs) <laughs> I mean, if truth be known, why? Why? You guys are like, oh, that's so mean. Now, why would you throw away your kids? You're going to need, you know, that's memories. Yeah, I got lots of them. Trust me. I got lots of memories, okay? You know, she doesn't even remember what she gave me last week. Why would I keep it for 50 years, you know? She doesn't remember. So, but those kind of things are special. I remember my son last week. Uh, oh, actually, it was quite a few years ago. You know, he gave us the perfect gift. It was like a mug or something that he made in school. I'm like, dude, that's cool, you know? And he made it all royal looking, and, you know, it was like jewels and everything, I think, or something like that. But it was from him. He made it. You know, and then another perfect gift that my son made us. I'm just talking about Cameron because he's in here. Uh, but Cameron made us the perfect gift. It was a shoe rack that he built himself out of scrap wood in the garage. And he says, Dad, check it out, check it out, it's a shoe rack. I'm like, dude, that is like the perfect gift, you know? Why? Because my son did. What makes the perfect gift? Well, we talked about the passage in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 45. And remember the story of Mary receiving the perfect gift from God. And God sends her an angel, and the angel goes to Mary and says, Hey, you will bear a child. But it won't be just any child. This child is the perfect gift. (laughs) You know, this child is the perfect gift. She says, well, how can that be? I am a, I'm a woman that has not yet known a man. You know what that means, right? (coughs) That's the PG version in the Bible of, I am a woman that has not slept with a dude. How can, you know, how can, 
how can that was the that's I mean if I if there was a Pastor Kevin translation of the Bible, that's what it would say, you know? Mary would be like, What up, God? I've not slept with anybody. What do you mean? You know? That would be the Kevin. It'd be pretty close to accurate. I mean, that's really what it meant. She had not been with a man. So obviously this is a gift from God. So we talk about how does that make it the perfect gift? Well, that perfect gift is uncom I mean, it's incomprehensible. You can't comprehend it. You can't understand it. We talked about Gabriel telling Mary this. She's like, well, that confused me. We talked about God not being the author of confusion. A lot of people think that if anything we do in church causes confusion, then it must be of the devil. Well, that's not true. Otherwise, Mary would say Gabriel was from the devil. That's kind of confusing me because I've not been with a man. You must be of the devil, angel. No, it was still of God. She was confused. See, the problem is, is God's not the author of confusion. We just don't get it sometimes. Our mind can't comprehend it. Well, doesn't the word of God say that his ways are higher than ours? That his ways we cannot even comprehend? Right? That means we're going to be a little confused. Right? That's not, that's not God's fault. You know, when my son doesn't get what I'm asking him to do and he gets confused, he tries to put it back on me. He's like, Dad, what? I don't, what? I'm like, son, just because you don't get it doesn't mean you're not still responsible to do what I told you to do. Now, what don't you understand about take the trash out? Right? Okay, he doesn't get confused about that, but you know what I'm saying. Sometimes kids want to try to put it back on their parents. Like, well, you didn't say, well, you didn't, I didn't, you didn't, duh. You know, just because they're confused doesn't mean I was confusing. <laughs> well, sometimes we treat God like like that, you know, or, or we treat the word of God like that, or we treat the teaching like that. It's like, I don't know, Pastor Kevin, you're confusing me. I don't get it. Well, just because you don't get it doesn't mean it's not the word. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not God. It just means our mind, our human mind can't wrap our brain around it sometimes. So sometimes the perfect gift is incomprehensible. It's like, how do you afford this, you know? If my wife gave me a present, and I opened it up, and it was like the size of this box, and then I opened up the box, and inside was a little key fob, I'm like, whoa, a key fob, and I go, beep, beep, and I hear it outside, and I walk out, and there's a nice silver Bentley, I'd be a little confused, right? I mean, that's a perfect gift that's incomprehensible, I'd be like, honey, what, what, are you, am I on pumped or what? <laughs> You know, like how did this, you know, you certainly didn't turn our Buick into a Bentley. That would be pit my ride for sure. You know what I'm saying? It's like, whoa, that is not what it looked like before. But that, it would cause confusion. The perfect gift is sometimes confusing. It's incomprehensible. And for Mary, it was incomprehensible. Secondly, we, uh, we learned that the perfect gift is only for you. When it's customizable, we talked about last, uh, you know, years ago, about three years ago, my son got a gift from his auntie and his uncle, and they were the perfect basketball shoe. He was playing basketball, and they went on to Nike.com, and they customized his shoes. It said Cam on the back of his shoes, and it had his number on it and everything like that. That could be the perfect gift. Why? Because it's only for Cameron. I can't wear those shoes. Because they don't say Kev on them, they say Cam. Sometimes the perfect gift is because it's only for you. And for Mary, it was only for her. This gift could only be in Mary. This gift could only be in the Virgin Mary. That made it the perfect gift. Because it wasn't for Elizabeth. Elizabeth had another miracle all in her own womb. But it was for Mary. And that was the perfect gift, because the perfect gift is oftentimes just for you, right? Now let's continue. The perfect gift number three. The perfect gift number three is empowering. And let me just remind you of the scripture, what it says there in verse 31. The perfect gift is empowering. You will conceive, this is the angel talking to Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit, get this now, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the baby to be born will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. That, my friends, is empowering. That is empowering. What, how is this empowering? Well, think about it. Think about it for a second. If I give my son the keys to an automobile when he turns 16, and he's old enough to get his license, he can't drive right now. But by me giving him that gift, what does it do? It empowers him to be able to drive. Oftentimes, the perfect gift is empowering. Sometimes I'll give my leaders a book. It's a gift to my leaders. And that book has specific content inside of it. And that content will empower them. What they could not do yesterday, they can do today. What they could not do today, they might be able to do tomorrow. Why? Because the perfect gift is empowering. What Mary could not do in herself, now check out, there's going to be people coming in and out, but I want you to focus right here. What Mary could not do on her own, she could only do by the gift that God put in her. That's the perfect gift. What Mary could not do in herself, only the Holy Spirit could do with the perfect gift. See, the perfect gift is empowering. There are often times in life when we feel weak, but the perfect gift empowers us. There's often times in life when we feel inadequate, but the perfect gift empowers us. There's often times when we just are down and cannot do it, but the perfect gift empowers us. There are many times where I just don't feel like I can even preach on a Sunday morning, but the perfect gift empowers me. There's going to be times where you feel like you can't do what you need to do at work, but the perfect gift will empower you. There's times where you just can't put up for, with your kids for one more hour. You know what I'm talking about when your parents are like, oh, you just, I've had it up to here with you, right? And there's times, parents, where we feel we can't parent them, not even a single more moment in time, but the perfect gift empowers you. Kids are sometimes where we don't feel like we can even live in this house, not another second. I'm moving out as soon as I turn 18. My birthday party is going to be outside of this house. But God empowers us through his perfect gift. Listen, there's times where we just don't know what we're going to do next. But we can't throw our hands up in the air and give up. There's times where we don't know what direction to turn. But we can't just put our hands up in the air and give up. There's times where we don't even know what to do next, where to look, what to say. We have no idea what direction we should be going. But God's perfect gift empowers you. So you should put your chin up, head up, eyes to the ceiling, eyes to the sky, and say, you know what? God's perfect gift empowers me. It's not about my inadequacies. It's not about where I'm weak. It's not about what I can do, it's about what the Holy Spirit can do inside of me. Because it wasn't about what Mary couldn't do. It was about what Mary could do with the Holy Spirit in her womb. <laughs> could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? What would the ultrasound look like? You're carrying Jesus, the Son of God, in your womb. The ultrasound is like that is a good looking kid right there. <laughs> right? That is a good, that is like the most perfect child. Could you imagine? Then the doctor goes, Mary, it's time. It's time. They go to give birth. She goes to give birth. Doctor's right there, picks up the child. Whoa, this child can walk already. What? I mean, we're talking about the perfect child. Well, there's going to be times where you experience. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit because of the perfect gift. I don't know where you've been this week. I don't know where you've been last week. I can tell you this, that I get a lot of phone calls. Pastor, you just need to pray for us. We, you know, the enemy is attacking us. I get a lot of emails. Pastor, you just pray. You know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to turn. I see a lot of stuff on Facebook. Pastor, if you'll, if you'll uh, you know, this, this, I get that on Facebook messages. And then I see some of your statuses. Uh, it's just been a crummy day. I don't know, you know, I just can't wait till this day's over. Really? You can't wait till this day's over. If you can't wait till this day is over, I say put your hands up in the air and begin to praise because he inhabits the praise of those people. I'm just going to say that. 
okay? I'll just put out a reminder for everybody on Facebook. Watch what you post, because if I'm your friend, I'm calling you out. Where's your praise at? Where's your praise at? Well, you don't understand what I went through this week. Well, where's your praise at? Well, you don't understand what my boss said and where. Well, where's your praise at? Well, my kids are rotten kids. Well, where's your praise at? Well, my lights got shut off. Well, where's your praise at? Well, how am I supposed to praise with no lights? What? You can't praise God in the dark? What, are you scared of the dark? Just begin to praise him. He will inhabit your praise, and I promise you, your day will get better. Can I promise you that when you are in your darkest hour, you throw your hands up in the air and begin to praise God, and he will turn your day bright. He'll turn a crummy day into a good day as soon as you start praising. Okay? Is that okay if I say that as your pastor? <laughs> okay, uh, it doesn't matter. I said it anyway. The perfect gift is empowering. Listen, it empowered Mary, right? It empowered Mary, a virgin. If it can empower Mary, it can certainly empower us. Number four, the perfect gift is a testimony. When you get that car, or when you get that perfect gift, you remember the video we showed uh, last week of those kids that got the perfect gift, and, and in the end, I mean, obviously it was an older video because because the kid was freaking out about a Nintendo 64. <laughs> And freaking out because it was the perfect gift. Listen, when you get the perfect gift, don't you just want to tell people about it? Your perfect gift becomes your testimony. And if you're not talking about Jesus, then oh my goodness, where have you been? Did you even receive it yet? Did you receive the perfect gift? Because if you would received the perfect gift of Jesus Christ, you wouldn't be able to hold it in. You'd have it. You'd be shouting at the mountaintops. You wouldn't be posting on Facebook, oh, I can't wait till this day is over. You wouldn't be calling me up, Pastor. This has just been the worst day of my life. What? Shout it from the rooftop. I remind you, did you not receive the perfect gift of Jesus Christ? Because if you receive the perfect gift of Jesus Christ, the same kind of gift that I received when I received my perfect gift, you would be able to hold it in. You'd be shouting from the rooftops. The perfect gift becomes testimony. Where we been if we're not telling people about our perfect gift? Listen, if I got the perfect gift in the form of a Bentley, don't you think that every one of my close friends would know about it? Don't you think? I'd be like, oh my gosh, this pastoring gig is the best. You're not going to believe what my church just got me. Right? Everybody should be a pastor someday in their life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I'd be telling everybody about it. When my kids get the gift that they've always wanted, guess what? They're blowing up Facebook with pictures and images and, and tags. And they're like tagging 50,000 people just so they all see what their perfect gift was. Your perfect gift is your testimony. I don't go up to people and say, oh my gosh, I just got the crummiest gift ever on Christmas. My wife got me this. She thought I liked it. I opened it up. Oh my gosh. Please. That was the worst gift ever. Why would I do that? I wouldn't go tell everybody about that. Number one, it's going to get around right back to her. And then I'm in so much trouble, it's not even funny. Why would I testify about a crummy gift? But that's what we do. We're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Oh, you wouldn't believe what the pastor said in church. It was just a crummy act. Who does he think he is? You know? It's like, my word, you know? We start talking about how crummy our day is, how crummy our week is. Why would we testify about that? But that's what we do. If you receive the perfect gift, you'll talk about that. And listen, you can receive it every day. The Bible talks about renewing our mind daily. Renewing our mind daily. Listen, the sorrow will endure for an evening, but the joy cometh in the morning. How many of you believe that? You might be sorrowful for the day, and that's okay. And listen, just because we're saved doesn't mean we don't have a bad day. 
Let me just clarify that for all you guys going, eh, the pastor Jeff thinks he's perfect. No, not at all. I have crummy days too. I just choose to handle it differently. I have a crummy day too, but I just choose to throw my hands in the air and praise anyway. I have crummy days too, but I just happen to change it like, <laughs> Jeff, that's true. Huh? I just happen to, to handle it a little differently. Even though we have crummy days, we handle it differently sometimes if we're Christians, if we're believers, okay? And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll just, let me just pause for just a second because if you think today is the most distracting day ever in church service, let me just tell you, when I, Chrissy and I helped start this church in Olympia, Washington, and we went to a, we were having services in a hotel, Okay, so we had this big ballroom in a hotel. That's where we were starting the church. So Chris and I went in kind of as the interim pastors to start this church. And one day we arrived there. Our sign's out. They've got welcome. I forgot the, even the name of the church that we were starting. But uh, we welcome and blah, 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 church starts and whatever. We go in and all of a sudden these guys are like staring me down as I come in the, in the, in the uh, lobby. And these guys that are staring me down, they have these long trench coats on and hoods over their head. Just like you see on the movies, you know, like the vampire movies, and they're like, you can barely see her face, but you can see their eyes glowing in the hood, you know? So Chris and I walk in, and these people are staring us down. I'm like, whoa, what? This is different, you know? Talk about a distraction at church, right? So we go in, and right where the double doors are to the ballroom that we were having church in, there were these tables all over the lobby and down the hall, right next to our doors where you go in, and there was a witch's convention going on the same time, same location, okay? Talk about warfare in the spirit. Talk about some distractions going on. And these guys were staring us down like, okay, we are. It was like WWF, baby, like his cave. We're going into the cage and someone's not coming out alive. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, but I serve a risen God, so you guys are in big trouble. You know what I'm saying? Man. So we go into the lobby, talk about distractions. These guys are staring us down. We can't even get a word out. These guys are like doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I go to the restroom, one of them begins to follow me. Like, okay, this is weird. So I go to the restroom, and this guy in this black long coat with a hoodie, he's following me to the bathroom, and, and then uh, I go to the restroom, he doesn't say anything in the bathroom, he just goes in there and stands by the window or by the mirror, by the sink, just stands in there. Like, okay, this is really awkward, you know? I come out of the bathroom, and I'm walking down the hall to go to the church ballroom where we have church, passing all of these these uh, witches and warlock tables with all their literature on it, uh, pass all them, and the guy comes out of that and follows me. Now I can, I didn't even have to look, I could sense him, I could feel that he was right behind me. So I turn around, and he looks at me, and his eyes just got real big in his little hoodie thing. <laughs> and he looks at me and goes, I wish you guys would just leave us alone! I'm like, whoa, dude, I didn't do anything to you, man, you know? Whatever you're feeling, that ain't me. That's just the God in me, you know, whatever, you know, but I didn't do it. He's like, oh, wait, I, wait, I, I mean, real loud in the lobby. I'm like, brother, you just do your thing, we'll do our thing, and we'll see what God does up here, okay? So we go in, and we just have church, and they go do whatever they're doing in their little convention, right? So we go in, I'm telling you what, we're praying it down. We're like, I don't know, there's a lot of distractions today. We're just praying it down. So our church is praying. We go into worship. It was fantastic worship. But we're, you know, normal levels. We can hear them. We're just worshiping like normal, but we can hear them trying to like, go above us. And then we're in a, in a kitty corner, so... On the side of us was this witch's convention going right on the other side of the wall. Behind the stage, at the other side of the wall, there was a uh, self-help. It's like, come on, everybody. Repeat after me. I can't do it. I hear this big loud, I can't do it. And they're just like this motivational self-help <laughs> yoga going on behind them. Like, oh, my gosh. And as we worship, they're getting louder. It's like the levels going like this, and everybody's like, oh my word, what is going on? But we had the best church service ever that day, despite all of the interruptions and everything. So, you know, I don't, a balloon, who cares? A balloon, you know, there's people going in and whatever. God wants you to understand the word this morning, and that word is this, that you have received a perfect gift, and it has been given just for 
you. It has been customized with your name on it. In the name of the Holy Spirit, it has been brought and placed inside your womb, just like Mary. See, God just put that in Mary's womb, and she's like, I don't get it, God. I've not been with a, with a man. How could this possibly be? But he says, I've done this for you, and your womb will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now imagine that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's pretty cool. It doesn't matter what you're going through in your day. Right up here, guys, right up here. It doesn't matter what you're going through in your day. It doesn't matter what you're going through in your week. You know, you might have had a crummy year or even a crummy decade. But I know this, that God has a gift that has been created and customized just for you. It is your testimony. We love to tell people about our gifts. Listen, six and a half million views on YouTube for one video of a person who received their perfect gift. It was a gift that they enjoyed, and they posted that on YouTube, and it got six and a half million hits. Your perfect gift is your testimony. Can you tell about the perfect gift of God in your life and watch six and a half million people receive that? Receive that. You know what that gift was? And it wasn't even adult. Is that your microphone right here? The microphone? One second. It wasn't even an adult. It was a child on YouTube. Thank you. It was a child on YouTube. What do you think that child got for Christmas? It was a child on YouTube. What do you think they got for Christmas? Six and a half million hits on YouTube. This child was six years old. The parent videotaped them opening their Christmas gift. And that video got six and a half million hits. The moment that child opened up her Christmas gift and saw tickets to Disneyland. Listen, how much more should we be telling people about the perfect gift that lives and resides within us? How much more should we be giving God the credit, the, the excitement, the enthusiasm? How much more should we be talking about our perfect gift through Jesus Christ? If six and a half million people can get excited about a little girl who's going to Disneyland, I think there's a, a couple billion people that should get excited about a, a people that's going to happen. Because I can tell you, I like Disneyland. I think it's fun. Whether you agree with Mr. Disneyland or not, it doesn't matter. But people grow up wanting to go to Disneyland all their life. I, I, I'm cool with that. But I'm more cool with going to heaven. How about you? Because I'm telling you, I don't know what your view of heaven is, but when I get to heaven, I know that the perfect roller coaster will be there. Just for me. <laughs> See, he says, I have made a mansion in heaven. I'm preparing a mansion just for you, Pastor Kevin. Well, what does that mansion include? Well, it could include a racquetball court. It could include a bowling alley. It could include all the things that I enjoy doing, including a roller coaster. Can my mansion have that? Sure, why not? Why not, right? My, yeah, I don't know, you know? But God's got the perfect place for you. You say, well, that's silly, Pastor Kevin. Don't you know that we're going to get to heaven and all we're going to do is sit at Jesus' feet and worship all day long? Hallelujah. 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 I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't think we're going to be doing that for eternity. Do you? I don't think so. It's not in the Word of God that way, and I don't think that's what heaven's going to look like. Now, I, don't, I can't tell you that I have the exact description of what heaven's going to be like, but I think that between me and God, I've got a little bit of an idea. <laughs> and what he does for us is unique and glorious. Amen? The perfect gift is a testimony. Verse 36. Now listen, this is where we can, where, where we can wrap this up. Verse 36, it says this. What's more... Your relative, now he's talking to Mary, right? And he says, what's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant 
in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and now is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Now, of course, Elizabeth had to go tell Mary. It's like, Mary, Mary. Did you know that I'm having a baby? It's like, what? You're like a thousand years old, Elizabeth. I know, right? That's what Elizabeth is saying. I know, right? OMG. I mean, that's, that's probably Elizabeth was like, what is going on? But as soon as Mary heard that, she was excited. Why? Because this was the testimony of Elizabeth. Elizabeth's miracle was her testimony. She had to go tell everybody about it. Others will believe in the gift of Jesus if you tell them about your gift of Jesus. Your testimony may be what gives someone else hope for their own testimony. Why is that important? Because, see, Mary didn't believe the angel Gabriel, was unsure. But when Elizabeth, who was a thousand trillion years old, comes and says, hey, Mary, by the way, guess what? I'm conceiving. I've conceived a, a, a child in my womb. She says, they used to call me barren, but now I've got someone growing in my womb. And Mary, at that very moment, thought, if it can happen to her, it can happen to me. I believe. I believe. Why? Because it happened for someone else. She witnessed a miracle in somebody else. She witnessed the perfect gift for someone else. And it might be that very testimony of your perfect gift that causes someone else to believe that they can receive a perfect gift as well. It's the perfect gift. If God can do it for one, he can do it for another. If God can produce a perfect gift for you, then he can produce a perfect gift for your friends. But we have to tell people about it. We have to testify about it. We have to tell people about our perfect gift. We've got to create a YouTube video and go, oh my God, it's not me, We should be that excited. I mean, you don't have to go crazy. Go, oh, Pastor Kevin says I have to be an idiot. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that we have to be that excited about it. Don't be more excited about your bone day than you are about Jesus Christ who turns that day around. Amen? Amen? All right. Although, would you come to the, to the guitar for me real quick? We're going to close this down. Next week, we're going to finish this series on the perfect gift. We're going to talk about that. The perfect gift being influential and what the, how the perfect gift is revealing in our lives. And then we're going to wrap this series up with the perfect gift being a response from the Lord. A response. I'll give you a little teaser. I'll give you a little teaser. My daughter came on. She has a lot of faith. But she doesn't just believe. She puts action behind that. So when she believes for something... She does something about it. That's the entrepreneur in my God. She doesn't just talk about receiving something. She puts all the things in line to make sure that happens. So I go home one night. And it was late at night. I think it was after setting up last week or I don't remember. It was, it was late at night. And I see this long list or what's supposed to be a list on the refrigerator, okay? And in big, bold letters, it says, Kehlani's Christmas wish list. <laughs> like, oh, great, here we go. She didn't even tell me it was up there. She just posted it up there. So I look at it, and I take it down. I'm reading my daughter's Christmas wish list. And it says, Kehlani's Christmas wish list. Please, 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 can I have a puppy. Then she goes into this full page of why she wants a puppy. She goes into a full page of how she'll take care of it. She goes into a full page of how she'll help pay for it. She goes into a full page about this and this and this and this. She's putting action behind her belief. She's putting action behind her request. She's putting action behind what she's believing for in faith. And she's listing it out. 
I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll pick up poop, I'll do this, I'll clean up, I'll take my walks, blah, 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 I'll feed up. And she even said, and I will give you every dime I own to help pay for it. And she says, in a little while, I'll also help pay for the shots and the veterinarian bills. She's just sitting all the whole thing up. She's waiting. Now she's waiting. She's waiting for the moment where her dad responds. <laughs> she's waiting for the response. Next week, we're going to talk about God's response to your faith. God's response to your belief. God's response to your action. Because oftentimes, you just might receive the perfect gift as a response to your faith. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Are you, Barbara? Would you stand with me? We want to pray this morning as we close the service out. And I'm believing for each and every one of you that this year you'll receive a perfect gift. Marie, that you will receive a perfect gift. Why is it a perfect gift? Because it's something you didn't know you could have. Why is it a perfect gift? Because it's something you didn't know you qualified for. Why is it a perfect gift? It's because it's a gift that you didn't even know was affordable for you. It's a perfect gift. And I'm believing for each and every one of us here today that this year we would receive our perfect gift. We don't always know what that is, but we know that when we receive it, oh my gosh, I couldn't have thought of a better gift. God, thank you. God, thank you. Amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads without any, anyone being distracted. Let's just begin to seek the Lord right now. And if you're here this morning and you're saying, God, I believe. God, I have faith. God, I put action behind my request. And you're here this morning saying, God, give me that perfect gift. See, for most of you here, I already know that you've already received salvation. That's the ultimate perfect gift. But some of you need a miracle. That would be a perfect gift for this year. And if that's you this morning and you're believing, would you simply raise your hand here and put it back down? Yes, 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 yes. All over the building. Yes, yes, yes. God has a perfect gift for each and every one of you. You don't even have to tell me what it is. You don't even have to put it on my refrigerator. You don't have to do any of that. God has a perfect gift for you. And if you believe, put action behind it. He may just respond. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much that you are a God of hope. You are a God of grace. You are a God of mercy. And you are a God of generosity. Lord, I thank you for the perfect gift of salvation. We thank you for the perfect gift of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the perfect gift that surpasses all gifts that we can even imagine. And Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would be our provider in response to our faith, in response to our belief, in response to our actions. God, we pray for our perfect gift this year, whatever that might be. For everyone that raised their hand, I pray for uh, peace that passes all understanding. God, knowing that you have their gift already being wrapped for them. Lord, I just pray that you would bless them this week. Bless them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone said? Amen. 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 God bless you. Real quick before we leave, while Pastor Kevin was uh, was talking about testimony, uh, God brought me to uh, Matthew 20 at the end of, the end of Matthew, and it's the Great Commission. And it says, all authority is given to him. And then he, then he tells us to go out to the highways and the byways and preach the gospel. We can't do that without giving our testimony. Because that's what we're giving them. We're giving them our testimony. Because we've got that perfect gift and we're giving it to them. Because that's what they need. So just wanted to leave you with that. Real quick before we leave, though, uh, don't forget Man Factor. I forgot to mention it. This Tuesday night will be the last Man Factor for about a month. So we're having it at Pastor Kevin's house at 7 o'clock. Men, show up, fellowship, eat meal, have a good time, and we'll see you at the, at the beginning of the new year. Also, youth tonight, we will be having you tonight, 5 o'clock, in the youth room. So bring your kids, youth come, 
We're going to hang out. It's going to be a small group tonight, so just meet us in the youth room. And don't forget, if you have the uh, uh, something to give to the troops, there's the bucket right there as you leave. Go ahead and put it in there so we can we can send it off tomorrow. So, God, we just thank you so much, Father, for all that you've done, Lord, and for all that you're doing in this church. Lord, we, we come before you, Lord, with expectant hearts to see the future, God, and to walk boldly into it, Father. We just say, have your way in this church, God, and have your way in our lives. Lord, as we leave, Father God, as we depart, Lord, that you would raise a hedge of protection around us. Father, that you would send your angels to go before us, Lord, and you would have your, your favor with us, Father God. We just say, have your, have your way in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. So real quick, we gotta, we got to go ahead and tear down right now. Uh, we got a group coming in. So if, if we can get everybody to help out with that, that would be awesome. Thanks. And don't forget the Burger King uh, fundraiser. If you want to buy them, either come to me, Michelle, or one of the youth, we'll get you one. $5.